What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 2019 Amazon Fire HD 10. This is the newest offering from Amazon in their tablet lineup and they promised 30% performance improvements over the last Fire HD 10, which I personally kind of liked. On paper, they have made some really nice improvements, like adding an 8-core 2 GHz CPU and upgrading Fire OS to 7.3, which is based on Android 9.0. Now, as a lot of you might know, these are Android tablets, but they don't come preloaded with the Google Play Store, but it's very easy to add it, and it does work on the 2019 Fire HD 10. I have made a couple tutorials on installing Google Play on the Fire HD 7 and the HD 8, It'll also work with this, but if you're really interested, I can do a dedicated video on the new tablet. So inside of the box, you're obviously going to receive the tablet itself, your wall charger, and our USB Type-C cable. That's right, they have added USB Type-C to this unit here. It's only for charging, it will not work with HDMI out, but they have included a 9-watt wall charger. So taking a look around the tablet, on the very top we have our power button, our USB Type-C for charging in sync, a pinhole microphone, our headphone jack, and our volume rocker. Over on the right hand side, we do have an SD card slot, and this is good up to a 512 gigabyte card. This tablet also contains dual stereo speakers, and it also does Dolby Atmos right out of the box, and it sounds really good. When comparing this to the 2017 version of the HD Fire 10, it's the exact same size, it's the exact same thickness, we just have more powerful internals. As specs go, it's pretty good for a $150 tablet. For the CPU, we have the MediaTek 8183. This is an octa-core CPU, four A53 cores at 2 GHz, and four A73 cores at 2 GHz. The GPU is the Mali G72 MP3. This is a tri-core GPU up to 850 MHz. And it does support Vulkan, and luckily, it is baked into the operating system. Unfortunately, they haven't added any more RAM in this variant. We still get 2 gigs, and I believe it's running LP DDR4, but don't quote me on that. It looks like it is from the benchmarks I've ran and things like that. For the display, we have a 10.1 inch, 1920 by 1200. The display looks great. The DPI isn't the highest at 224, but the price really reflects that. There are two storage variants of the HD 10. 32 and 64 gigabyte, but they both have a micro SD card slot, and that's good up to 512 gigabytes. 802.11 dual band AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, a 4700 mAh battery, and they claim up to 12 hours of battery life. And finally, the operating system. It's running Fire OS 7.3, and this is based on Android 9.0. So the first thing I always like to do with these new devices is run some benchmarks, and I really want to compare this to the older 2017 version of the HD 10 to see if we're really getting that 30% increase in performance. So the first benchmark I ran was Geekbench 4. On the left hand side we have the new model, on the right hand side we have the older 2017 model. The single core score on the 2019 was 1383, multi-core 5137. If we compare this with the old 2017 model, we got a 17% increase in single core performance, but a 133% increase in multi-core. Moving over to the GPU side of things using 3 Mark Slingshot Extreme. Now like I mentioned, the new model does support Vulkan, so I was able to run the Vulkan test here. OpenGL 3.1, 1151. On the old model, 478. So we also have a really nice GPU performance bump. And finally, Antutu. Now I had to run an older Antutu 7 benchmark because that was the only one that would work on both of these, but we'll get a good idea here. On the new model, Total score, 121,516. On the older 2017 model, 69,083. And the new 2019 model did come ahead of the 2017 model and all of the tests run inside of Antutu. So the overall user experience on this tablet isn't bad at all. It's pretty quick to process everything that you want to do. Amazon definitely touts this as a media device for YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, and their Amazon Prime. And it does that quite well. It's got those dual stereo speakers, sounds pretty good, and this big bright 10.1 inch screen. So if you're looking to buy one of these to watch movies and videos on the go, it's a really great option and it's very inexpensive for what it is. Just keep in mind, without installing Google Play, you will be limited to the apps that are on the Amazon App Store or apps that you sideload. And some of those won't work because when we install Google Play, we'll have to install Google Services, which will allow us to access Google Apps. So as a media consumption device, it's actually a pretty decent tablet. We have Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Video, HBO. All those apps can be installed from the Amazon App Store or sideloaded. But what about gaming? 
Now, I did install Google Play on here, but I want to test a couple games that are available on the Amazon App Store. So first up, we have Minecraft. And it definitely works great on this tablet. Now this is a very well optimized game. It works on a lot of lower end Android devices. This is the Pocket Edition from the Amazon App Store. I also tested out Roblox because I know a lot of people will be buying these for their kids. And Roblox also works great. Moving over to a more graphically intense game. This is Asphalt 9. And I do notice some stutters. When the effects come in on screen, you'll see it stutter a bit. And sometimes it's kind of bad, especially when you hit that nitrous. So there will be issues with a few higher end games. Since I have Google Play installed on this, I figured I'd go ahead and install Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG. I really wanted to see if we could run these on here. And to my surprise, on the lowest graphic setting with Call of Duty Mobile and the highest frame rate, it actually runs quite well. Now I definitely need to get used to using this bigger screen. I've been playing this on my phone with a much smaller screen. Got to reach those fingers out. But it does work. And performance is much better than I thought it would be. Can't believe I just did that. So naturally, since Call of Duty Mobile's working, I figured I'd go ahead and test out PUBG. I have it set to the lowest graphical setting, but the highest frame rate. And I know we're not getting 60 here, but I wanted to see how far we could push it. It's definitely not as smooth as Call of Duty Mobile, but it is playable. Now it's time for my favorite part, emulation. We're going to be testing out some Dreamcast and PSP. For Dreamcast, we're using the ReDream emulator. I am upscaled to 1280 by 960. Unfortunately, this GPU does not support OpenGL ES 3.2, but that's totally fine. A lot of these emulators don't use it anyway. I'll also be using the Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. So I know for a fact that the 2017 version of the HD Fire 10 would not run this emulator at all. I mean, it was super duper slow. Here, we're getting full speed emulation with upscaling, which is pretty awesome. This is the original Soul Calibur and happens to be the best version for Dreamcast. One more for Dreamcast, Upscale, this is Cannon Spike, and yes, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 will run at full speed on this device. PSP also works great with a lot of different games. I'm at 2x resolution. This is Tekken 6. Unfortunately, higher end games for PSP or harder to emulate games won't run well on this, like God of War Chains of Olympus, Killzone, or Midnight Club Dub Edition. And just to show you what I was talking about, God of War Chains of Olympus, I'm using the Vulcan back end. I also tested the OpenGL back end. 1x resolution, it's really trying hard here. It is at 60, but there's a lot of frame depth, especially when there's lots of effects on screen. But overall, it actually handles PSP quite well. It'll also do N64 upscaled and PS1. So there's lots of retro games that are going to be playable on this, but just don't expect to run the Dolphin emulator on a $150 tablet. But in the end, it's a welcome upgrade from the 2017 version. I really wish they would have added an extra gig of RAM or even a half gig, bringing it up to 2.5 or 3. But unfortunately, they left it at 2. And even if you purchase the more expensive 64 gigabyte model, you're only going to get 2 gigs of RAM. And for anybody interested, yes, they do come in different color variants. 
So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. It's a decent tablet for the price, but keep in mind you're still pretty much buying a low-end tablet. Unless you want to spend a lot of money on an iPad or a Samsung tablet, I think this is one of the best options at this price point. If you're interested in picking one up, I will leave links in the description. I really appreciate you guys watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on this tablet, or if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.